it'll be it'll be rough. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, now six o'clock. We will call to order the special meeting of the Randolph County Board of Commissioners. This is a special call meeting to uh, hear the appeal to a previous decision by our Board of uh, Planning and Zoning. And uh, we welcome each one of you here tonight uh, to participate in this process. And we will uh, give anyone here a, a few minutes, anyone here tonight who wishes to speak to this issue, for or against it, you will have an opportunity to speak. Uh, you will please come to the podium here at, at the microphone and uh, introduce yourself by name and address for the minutes of our meeting. And we remind everyone that we are live on Facebook and YouTube, as all of our meetings are now. So we welcome you to the process, and I will call on um, our county manager and our interim zoning administrator right now, Hal Johnson, who will present this matter to, to the board and to those of you that are in attendance tonight. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> we have one uh, appeal tonight from a decision of the planning board, and this is an appeal uh, to uh, where the planning board unanimously through a rezoning. It was for a 10-acre track. 10.01 acre track on Whedon Street in Columbia Township outside of Staley. Uh, it's in a primary growth area for the county. It's currently zoned residential agricultural and the rezoning request was to rezone the property to conventional subdivision overlay restricted. Uh, what that means is uh, uh, restricted against single wide mobile homes. However, it would allow uh, double wide manufactured homes or site or modular or site built homes. And this particular request is for uh, double wide manufactured homes. Uh, this is for a six lot subdivision, uh, as I mentioned, for class A manufactured housing as per the site plan that was submitted to the planning department and reviewed. The, uh, this outlined in yellow there is the property itself that's under consideration. The, uh, the little red dots that you see generally uh, signify either site built homes or uh, uh, double wide uh, manufactured homes or modular homes in the area. The blue area to the south is a uh, uh, light industrial uh, operation that has been in existence for some time. This is a, the uh, subdivision plat that was presented. It's uh, six lots, all fronting on uh, the state maintained road, which is Whedon Street. All the proposed lots are in excess of an acre in size. <clears throat> there, there was some discussion uh, at the planning board meeting about what watershed requirements are uh, in this area. And these lot sizes exceed the requirements uh, for being located in a watershed. Uh, the watershed only allows, uh, allows you to have 40,000 square foot lots for single family residences. And these are, uh, as you can see, uh, all in excess of an acre. 
uh, aerial photograph of the property. Certainly across the street is uh, some agricultural land. This backs up to uh, uh, various forms of residences. And here's some photographs of the uh, land surrounding the, the site. Back in 2021, uh, to the north, you'll see those off of Brooksdale Road, there was a rezoning there for a 10 lot subdivision, which is comparable to the request that uh, the board is considering tonight. I want to, to mention just very briefly some of the history that goes into uh, subdivision rezoning request. And uh, Randolph County back in 1989, had to count the years up, that was 34 years ago, was one of the first counties in North Carolina to require what we refer to as a major subdivision to go through a rezoning process. Up until, up until that time in North Carolina and in counties, the, if you met the minimum lot size and you met the minimum road standards, subdivisions were approved through just a technical review instead of the public hearing process. But uh, we received so many requests back then for subdivisions, major subdivisions, in areas that once were uh, rural agricultural that the Board of County Commissioners at that time uh, brought major subdivision review under the rezoning category, which is uh, meaning that the majority of land in Randolph County is currently zoned residential agricultural. And in a residential agricultural area, you can have by right what is defined as a minor subdivision. You can take your property and you can divide it up into three lots and that's a minor subdivision. Once you go beyond that, the, over the years, the definition of what's a major subdivision has changed. At one time, it was five lots. If you, if you develop more than five lots, so that was a major subdivision and you had to go through a rezoning process. What we found happening was there was a whole lot of five acre, five lot subdivisions being developed. So the, the board reduced those number of lots uh, to, for a minor subdivision to three. So if you've got land and you're gonna divide that land up into more than three lots to sell, then that becomes a major subdivision. And the, uh, and that's, uh, kicks in the rezoning process. During that process, we look at a lot of different factors in a subdivision. We look at number one is, is the lot sizes. Uh, we, we have different standards uh, depending on where that subdivision is located. In some areas of Randolph County, you'll recall I, I said that this is in a primary growth area. Areas located around municipalities, corporate uh, limits of those municipalities, and, but it still is in the county. We call those primary growth areas because the mere fact of a city being located there, caught, the reason the city's there, you're gonna have more urban type development, more uh, uh, residential type development closer together. That's, that's why it's a city. And that impacts, to some degree, small areas outside those municipalities. This is located in a, in a primary growth area where over time we anticipate there will be changes in land use patterns in those areas. And this is a good example, this map that you see here. As I said, down at the bottom you see industrial, commercial industrial property you see subdivision development, uh, and you see agricultural development, all within this, the framework of this, uh, the map that we see. So what the county does in, in the rezoning process, we look at that subdivision, and we see about lot sizes. Does it meet the minimum lot size? But the, what made it special in Randolph County back in 1989, and it's still that way, 
does the housing characteristics of that major subdivision fit into the general general characteristics of the community meaning do you have owner occupied site built resident or, or single family residence structures in that area is that the primary type of uh, land use in the area and in this area generally you see that you see subdivisions and you see site built or, or you see single family <coughs> residential development uh, in this area and uh, I, I will say that in uh, 1989 when the county began this process we were we were actually the first county in North Carolina the other counties saw what we were doing and now it's almost accepted practice in North Carolina. I think, Mr. Chairman, I, I do want to say that it's ironic that the request that's before the board tonight on appeal, if legislation that is being considered in Raleigh right now is <coughs> ultimately approved, this would be taken out of the hands of the county planning board and the county commissioners and is a development that would be approved by right by state law in North Carolina. So uh, I, I just wanted to mention that. I'm, I'm proud of what Randolph County has done over the last decades in land use planning and development. And I hope that that right is not taken away from the local elected officials. So Mr. Chairman, that's a review of the request that's before the board tonight. I know Mr. Uh, Eric uh, Davis is the proposed developer and he's here to answer any questions on the development. Thank you. Any questions of uh, Hal? Any commissioner have any questions? Uh, I will say, uh, just to follow up on Hal's point, um, the, the proposed change in, in the zoning uh, authority uh, is um, in itself relate is it, even as it relates to this question here it that's alarming that they take it away from local government and folks that are here tonight to to go through this process and the state would make the decision that also sets a serious um, uh, precedent for going forward relative to <coughs> local governments in North Carolina so I, I hope that I know we will follow it and uh, hope that you will do the same as, as that legislation moves forward. It has been introduced in both the House and the Senate and state in the General Assembly, so uh, we're keeping an eye on that. So with that, I'm going to open the public hearing. And um, as for those, um, Eric, would you want, you want anything <coughs> you want to say tonight for your development? Well, look, we'll go to you, Dan. Uh, I, I, and I'll say, Mr. Chairman, the, the order of the process that we normally follow, we followed this at the previous meeting, and this is what we do, and, and the planning board and the board of adjustment is that the applicant goes first, provides um, whatever presentation they want to, and then those, anyone who's in opposition gets the opportunity to speak, and then we, the applicant gets a, a brief summary, usually to try to answer any questions if he or she chooses to do so at the end. Um, and so, as I would remind this board, as anyone comes forward, if you have questions for them, it's probably best to ask those questions uh, while they're in front of you. All right. Okay, um, I have some pictures of the homes that we typically build. If I may approach the board, I can pass these out if, if yes. y'all want to do that. <clears throat> Eric, th these pictures are what you're proposing. Yes, this is the type of home that we'll want to put in the back. <clears throat> I think they're the same. It's the same. You want to do the record? Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone that needs. And for the record, are there two photographs? Is that what we have? There's two photographs. There's two yes. photographs. So there's two photographs that will be made a part of the record. So these homes are brand new Clayton homes. 
They tend to be around 1,400 to 1,600 square feet. Um, come with a one year warranty from the manufacturer. Uh, these homes range, they've actually increased at last board. I said they're around 200,000, but now we're up close to 230,000 on some of these homes. So uh, they are selling well. They would fit the, the needs of the mega site for the blue collar worker or anyone else in the area. Uh, and there is a shortage of homes. I'm a real estate broker. And uh, as soon as we're putting these on the market, we're usually getting contracts within one or two days, um, which is a lot better than it was at the last year. And I was at, it was more of a 10 to 15 day median before homes went under contract. Uh, there is a, some, a couple of things that were mentioned at the last hearing of concerns. Um, and someone spoke, but I don't think at the time there's anyone here from the church, but there's a church at the back right corner. And I'd love to leave uh, some woods or some kind of bear there out of respect for the church to give them their privacy. Um, and uh, they, most what we intend on clearing is just enough for the septic, the well, and the home. So we don't intend to clear cut the lot, just, just enough to make it where we can get a nice home there. But as you can see from the pictures, these are nice houses. Uh, I showed it, actually a realtor the other day that showed it, put her contract, said <coughs> she couldn't tell the difference between it and a modular home, or I'm sorry, an all frame mod uh, on the inside anyway. She said these have really come a long ways over the years. Uh, so I'm just trying to make more housing to meet the demand for that area. And I did the homes on Brooksdale. I, I did eight lots over there. We've already built on five of those. And we have remaining three that we're gonna start in the next couple weeks. Uh, but if you look at Brooksdale and um, the adjacent road, I can't see the name up from here, but um, they're all similar size lots to, to what we're proposing here. These are actually bigger lots. So it should give a little more privacy. The DOT did mention uh, when I got permission for the driveway permits that um, they wanted a driveway per every 200 feet. So our compromise was to put each lot a driveway side by side. However, uh, Daniel at Carolina Survey, and he and I had, had a discussion, he's been trying to reach out to the DOT since December about this law. Uh, and maybe y'all are aware of it, maybe you're not, but they've never been able to produce any type of written documentation or law saying that that, that is an actual rule. But in order to comply, we agreed to do so. Mr. Davis, you are the developer. You, yes, you're sir. not going to sell lots. I, I'm the developer and the builder. Uh, so, I am set up contractor. So we basically take the lots, dig the footings, uh, build the homes, and set them up. And then I'm also the broker, so I list them. Have you had preliminary soil evaluations done for each of them? Yes, I have. And the soil is really good there and it, it will su suffice for six homes with three bedrooms each. Make sure I'm, I'm understanding on the driveway. You do have driveway permits. We had approval. I haven't actually don't have my hand, but I didn't meet with them in person at the DOT. And, uh, she said, I don't remember at the time, I've got the email, but she did give permission to do that as long as we put them side by side. So every uh, two lots would have combined driveways, at least adjacent to each other. And that would help with the traffic flow. Other questions? But there'll be room for someone to pull out into the traffic. Yes, we'll do turnarounds beside the homes so they can back into a turnaround area and, and pull out forward so they don't have to back out to the main road. Other questions? Yeah, hold on just a minute. I'm writing. I don't multitask very well. Um, <clears throat> I noticed that um, in here, in reading the material, that um, you were not going to be burning the debris? No, that's part of the guidelines. Right, all right. And so you had mentioned some options, but nothing was specified. What, how, do you know what you'll be doing with the? With the debris? Yes, uh, that, there you, is a, that you've cleared. There's you've a cleared pulp the wood facility. At the time we were going to, before zoning, we were going to burn, but now we can't. So, but there is a pulp wood facility uh, in nearby Leary that buys pulpwood. I think we'll be able to truck it over there and get dispose of it that way. 
Okay, so you will not be doing wind rows? No. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Do you have any more? Oh, do you have any more? I'm the question asker. Thank you. Um, um, no, I think that covers it for right now. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Appreciate that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else here that wishes to speak in support of this request? <clears throat> anyone here wishes to speak against the request? I know that uh, Margaret Dunn is the one who filed the appeal. My name's Keith Virgil. I live at 3450 Wheaton Street. I live right next to the lot you just bought. I'm that dot right there, the first dot right next to the guy doing the yellow dot right there. I'm that house. Um, I moved out there to get away from people. I can't stand people. Don't like neighbors. You know, hey, I'm being honest. Mr. Virgil, just, just. I just want. Direct, Mr. Virgil. I want to know, uh, like, Mr. Virgil. you're saying. Mr. Virgil. Virgil. I'm Virgil. sorry. Virgil. Sorry. Yes, sir. If you just direct your comments okay. to us, please. Question sir. is, is he building homes or is he buying mobile homes and putting them in there? Okay. Are they mobile homes or are they, or is he building? Because he said he built the homes. When you get a mobile home, all you do is pull it in with a truck and you put the roof together and the floor and the walls inside. That's, that's a manufactured home. <clears throat> I've talked to my marketing people too. My price, the value of my home is going to depreciate because of the mobile homes. When you have mobile homes in that area and you have a stick built house, the value of your home depreciates. I mean, that's, that's just, that's common sense and that's the way it is. Um, you know, I have no trespassing signs all the way up and down my property, okay? The surveying crew we done had out there was already 50 feet in my yard doing whatever it is they want to do because they don't have to abide by no trespassing signs, I guess, that don't apply to them. I've had realtors down there in my yards. That wasn't from him, but I've had realtors from the property next to my house. People just walking to my property with no trespassing signs. I mean, I got, dead, I got a dead tree that fell off his property that's laying across my property, destroying some of my trees that's already fell. There ain't nothing been done about that either, you know? I don't, I don't appreciate, I, I just, I don't, I don't approve of this at all. I mean, I have peace and quiet, I have tranquility, I get away from everybody, I bust my back, my wife busts her back every day to buy this property because there's nobody around us, you know. This guy wants to come in and put six houses and a little 10 acre lot, I mean, they're going to be right in my yard. I mean, right at my yard. No privacy. I'll have maybe five feet of woods right there, that's my woods, and then the rest is going to be completely gone. Everything's going to be gone. I mean, everything is going to be gone. It's going to be horrible. I don't want to have neighbors. I don't want to be around anybody. That's why I spent the money I spent to get the property I got. But I mean, I know it doesn't matter to anybody. I mean, it really doesn't, but it matters to me, you know. That's my house. That's my domain. I mean, and I got trail cams all up and down my property. I don't want to see any contractors coming on my land. I don't want to see any workers coming on my land. Nothing. Nothing at all. They will be prosecuted. I don't care who it is. I mean, that's my right. Correct? No trespassing means no trespassing. Stay off my property. But apparently surveyor crews and everybody else can just do what they want. If that's what I'm going to have to deal with, then we're going to have issues. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know? But I, I, this is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous, man. I know what I'm saying is a waste of my breath. I'm sure you already got your approval. This is just a waste of our time, but I had to speak my mind. I wasn't able to come last time. This just, this is horrible. This is horrible. But whatever. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Please sign in. Hello. Carol Loberser, um, 1395 Langley Road in Staley. 
Um, I was here last time, and what I remember is the, the survey did not include the power easement. Do we have an updated survey that has the power easement? Um, I, I agree there's a development right behind him that's level lot and all clear and on a much slower side street, and, and it's much more, you know, the driveways are even. Have you actually driven on this road, it is 55 mile an hour speed limit, okay? So it's, it's pretty tight, and you're gonna put six driveways, and the power easement, I think, is 100 feet. So somebody's gonna buy, um, I mean, are we an opportunist where we're actually gonna let a resident buy a property with a 100 foot easement, power line easement on their property? So, I mean, I understand development, I just always have felt that six was too much for this lot, um, just we want to develop, but it has to look good, it has to feel good, it has to match the houses and the rest of the area. So if I point to that sign, I see a side street and I see lots of small lots and they're older, okay? And then I see you know one acre lots that are newer and they look okay. I'm with I'm with the gentleman here. I prefer stick build because I think I think we want to see the county grow nicely, okay? We don't want to be opportunists and let's just slap quick houses and make quick money and yes, the value's gonna go up because there's nothing else out there. We're not stupid, okay? But, um, but you know, it just, it just doesn't seem like it's really gonna look that well um, and it's n not to take anything away. It's not, I think he's done a better job um, with the development on the side street than this one. So that's my two cents, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Doug Nixon, resident Staley, 43 years. So I just want to reiterate what Carol just said. Uh, you know, we've got growth, growth coming in from Toyota and Wolf Speed on both sides of Staley. And Staley's an old town. I mean, uh, a lot of stick built houses, uh, a lot of the folks, they're lifetime residents there, and um, don't see a big problem, you know, with maybe putting you know, one or two in, but shoving six in in a small area like that, we have several truck, trucking companies that travel that road, and just for safety aspect, um, I would like to see the number at least lowered to possibly three, um, just for that, you know, for school bus. But another thing too is, you know, when somebody presents mobile homes for sale, first buyers usually are great, they take care of the place, no crime, but it's the second and the third and the fourth homeowners that come into these mobile homes that the sheriff's office is constantly coming out. Uh, Staley Cove is a great example. Um, I don't have the law logs, anything to pull. How many times the sheriff's office has gone in there for domestic violence, drug use? Um, so just trying to look you know, towards the future, since we do have great companies coming into town, we'd like to offer you know, nice residential places for them and not turn it into a, a trailer park corner of the county. So, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I'm Travis Pugh. I was here the last time before, and I own the property due south there. I also own a little corner that joins the development. And as I said before, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not against development. I understand that. I am, I'll have to say it again. I'm very biased because I am a farmer. I make a living farmer. With that being said, when you take a lot of those dots to the due north, and it was mentioned here the last time, if, I, if to control it, I should own it, okay? I did not know that land was for sale until it was gone. I didn't know that land was for sale until it was sold. With that being said, I worked with a large dairyman named Ard Koopman, one of, one of the biggest dairy farmers around here that I'm aware of. Most of you probably know him. Ard Koopman and myself are trying to buy these tracts of land when we know about them at development price. And I know y'all say we're in primary growth. I understand that. But remember what this county was based on. <clears throat> 
what it was founded on, what this country was founded on, agriculture. What are we going to do when we can't feed ourselves anymore? That's my question tonight. No disrespect to Mr. Davis whatsoever. I do understand, but at the same time, you could take a lot of those dots out if the neighborhood had been known and aware of what was going on. To this day, Mr. Koopman looked at it. When he called, it was already broke up. So what I'm trying to say tonight is, is this got by the neighborhood? Our neighborhood is, you know, hey, if you want to put one or two homes in there, we're good with it. We're not looking for another development. So I've got skin in this game, if you will. And had, it, had I known, this wouldn't be a problem tonight. We were never aware of what he wanted to do. He said there was a meet. There was no meeting ever called. That's all I'm saying. There's, I'm not calling anybody a, a liar in any way, but nobody was ever made aware of what was going on. Let's cut it back. That's all I'm asking. Let's cut it back. Thank you. I, I would just comment to that, as Mr. Johnson pointed out, he, he can put three of anything he wants to on there without going through this process. May I speak again, sir? Sure, sure. And I understand that. And I, I, you know, I can't speak for everybody else, but you know, three is better than six. And I really think that would kind of fit, because there again, if you'll look at those houses on that other road, they, they've been there, well, a lot of them have, have already gone down. But this, this, this neighborhood has not developed over the last 10 years. There's been two homes put in over there for the most part over the last 10, 15 years. Everything has stayed the same. And I understand progress. I really do, ladies and gentlemen. I understand progress. But at the same time, give the good old boy opportunities at some point. If his money is just as good as everybody else, and if we can hold progress off by buying it, we'll try to buy the daggum place. I, don't, I know I'm just country terms, but... I'm being, being straight. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Uh, I think most everybody uh, here already knows me. Uh, Margaret Dunn, formerly Margaret Dunn, but uh, I go by Maggie Dunn. So I am the, uh, the uh, person that submitted the appeal, okay, to this, uh, to this development here. Um, I would expect that uh, most of you are most familiar with uh, the appeal that I put in and uh, the, the intimate details of that appeal. A um, couple of things I'd like to mention, is, and some of that's already been mentioned here, is the particular 10 point something acres that, uh, that was presented here on the, uh, uh, in March, here on the 7th of March, never depicted, uh, and I know Mr. Johnson has already highlighted that the watershed has uh, no impact on the development of that 10 point something acres. However, the power easement uh, that I got from the clerk of court, uh, that was not depicted, and it's still not depicted on, the, on this property, which severely limits the road frontage and, uh, and the number of lots that uh, most of us think are reasonable uh, for this location, but still to this day not depicted in what, what we have here with uh, that Mr. Davis is uh, presenting. Um, not sure why that is. Um, but moving on, uh, there are a number of concerns here uh, for the community. I've already addressed the watershed, the power easement, then uh, let me see, uh, the transportation and the safety issue was already addressed. I'm not sure whether how, or how many of you, okay, sitting here, commissioners, have been out on uh, Whedon Street and seen the location uh, that we're talking about. 
But I can tell you, if you come off of 49 and you're heading towards uh, downtown uh, Staley and you, you're coming down for, uh, 49, you take a left on Whedon, and as you come up this road and you get to Mr. He just left, Baggio's house, okay, this road is in a low portion and you come up to Mr. Baggio who left, who's obviously uh, disturbed with what's going on. You can't even see that 10 acres that Mr. Davis is developing, okay? So you're going to crest that location and then be dead into six places, six, six driveways or three driveways that are right there in a blind spot on Whedon. So it's a safety requirement. And I've already actually talked to this uh, uh, Mr. I think it's Lowe, uh, from the uh, uh, DOT who gave the safety analysis for the original uh, property uh, that went before the board. Okay, he said that I should uh, take notes of how many wrecks occur there and then report it to the board. So that's not how we should work in terms of safety. We should be proactive, not reactive to a safety requirement. So I'm not sure if anybody sitting here, commissioners, has been out to that location, but it's actually very, very dangerous, okay? And, and I drive two vehicles. I drive a 450 dually, so it doesn't matter how high you're sitting in that 450 dually or in, your, my, hoop, in my hoopty, which is a little Ford Edge, as I crest, okay, uh, Whedon Street and head into where this development is going. I'm telling you right now, it's dangerous. We need to look at that. Moving on to a couple other issues here. So the safety issue. Uh, let me see. We already addressed uh, the fact that these manufactured houses do not meet HUD requirements. So those of us who have uh, skin in the game and are vested interest in, in, in Staley, who have nice property and nice homes, are not interested in manufactured homes to boost our value. Why? Because it's not going to boost our value. I know that, you know that, and everybody sitting over here within the community knows that as well. Next issue, long-term development uh, for Randolph County. Uh, obviously, we're an agricultural county. Uh, North Carolina, in terms of our Randolph County alone, uh, the state of North Carolina is number uh, one in beef and corn, number two in dairy, number six in poultry, poultry number six in hay. Just in Randolph County alone, uh, we are number one in, the, in uh, the country for tobacco, sweet potatoes, number two in the hockey, oh, excuse me, uh, hogs and turkey, okay? So those of us who are living in Randolph County have a long-term interest in what's happening in Randolph County and the way ahead for, no for North Carolina. And if those of you sitting here right now don't have our vested interest, then perhaps you don't need to be here. That's how I am. So, I mean, I'm not, uh, we, we know going on right now in, in the country, okay, we're in a crisis in terms of agricultural food production and the way ahead for, oh, is China going to feed us? I don't know, okay, but let's hope not. So we need to be committed to North Carolina and, and certainly Randolph County since we're such a large producer of agricultural uh, efforts here, here in uh, not only the country, but North Carolina. I have, uh, I submitted 55 affidavits uh, from our small community of just over 300 people in Staley. I submitted with my appeal 
55 affidavits from people who live in Staley who are interested in this, this development and where we're going, okay, in Staley. 55 I submitted on the 7th of March. I have another 51 with me right now, and I can tell you, if I, if I didn't have an actual real job, I, I could have every person or just about in Staley sign an affidavit, but unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time. So, um, let me see. I, uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this process. I hope you've listened to, the, uh, to, to my voice along with, with the other folks that have, uh, have been uh, here and, and spoke. Um, obviously, we're concerned about our, about our community. We're concerned about the way ahead. We're, uh, I want to uh, thank you for tomorrow, tomorrow's meeting down here at Eastern Randolph to talk about uh, the development of Staley, the development of Randolph County, and what's ahead for us uh, uh, as, as a county. So um, I, I hope uh, you hear our voices and, uh, and, and uh, how about have some mercy on us, okay. Um, Mr. Davis, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to you uh, uh, offering uh, housing for, uh, for, for folks. He's, he said the last time uh, we were here, not everybody can afford a half a million dollar house. I certainly never could afford a half a million dollar house. Uh, I was a private in the Army, and I lived in a single wide trailer here in Randolph County for uh, seven years before I could build a house. So I'm all about, uh, I'm all about housing, okay, for, for folks. That's a, that's a good thing, okay. But uh, 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 Mr. Nixon already addressed uh, certain, certain housing brings in all kinds of crime, okay, to, uh, to, to our county as well. And uh, we're looking at uh, reasonable housing. Uh, we like stick built, uh, but uh, if we can't have stick built, then we certainly think a reasonable footprint of 10 acres with, with ample buffer, okay, for the church, for ample buffer for Mr. Uh, Bergio, who lives next door, uh, and none of that was addressed, okay? It was almost like overlooked at the, uh, the last meeting on uh, if, if Mr. Bergio is gonna get a uh, certain buffer, uh, if the church is gonna get a certain buffer, Okay, then that needs to be in writing. Um, one of the things that uh, Mr. Pugh addressed was, uh, was transparency and the fact that uh, nobody knew what was happening on Brooksdale Road, okay, until after the fact. Um, I can tell you right now, I filed the appeal here uh, shortly after the 7th of March, I combed the neighborhood. I went to the church. I knew Mr. Uh, Pugh was a, was a, uh, a landowner next to the uh, property. The only person that got notification of this appeal was Mr. Bergio. I didn't even get it in writing that, that of this meeting today, okay? until I got it from Mr. Bergio, and he gave me a copy of the notice that he got from you. So Mr. Pugh, who is a landowner, me, who hired the appeal, or filed the appeal, never got notified. So Mr. Pugh has already addressed that we have a problem with transparency in this community <clears throat> that we don't know what's going on until after the fact after the developer has already bought, bought the property and we're already behind the power curve trying to catch up. I'm interested in being an investor in his partnership with buying up agricultural land in Staley and Randolph County if he wants to partner with me. But if we don't know about it, then we don't know as a community to do anything about it. It's just like Brooksdale. We didn't know that that was going into a development until it was already done. 
So we have a problem with notifying people within the community with what's going on. So I encourage you as county commissioners with, with the, the distrust that we have with the federal government, and you don't need to talk to me about distrust with federal government. I work for an agency that is under the microscope. However, we have distrust in the federal government, we have distrust in our local government, and when we don't get notified, such as even something as simple as this, okay, all that does is give more distrust to the community that our public officials, our local officials, aren't doing us right. So I thank you, I thank you for the opportunity, and I, and I, you know, God bless Mr. Davis for trying to provide uh, uh, appropriate housing for uh, for folks in the community, um, and and I uh, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Yep. I have a quick question. Whose responsibility is it to notify um, neighborhoods when there's something like this? Is that? That's the county. <clears throat> All right, but okay. So, what? What? Our planning department. Yes, the planning department. What, yes. well, I okay. Think what you're asking is the breadth of the notification. Yes. So the not the notifications that go out in how, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but the property is posted. There's signs that are placed. Um, every adjacent property owner, and that means a property owner whose property line touches the applicant, is notified in writing. It's advertised on our website. Um, that happens in every, every rezoning case. Okay, and they're notified in writing if their property touches. Is adjacent to. Yeah. Okay. Can somebody correct me if that's, I mean, because I don't send out so those notices. So any of these. Yeah. I think. Right, I think anything that actually touches the Right here. Please. Yes. Say that, say that, sir. What? There was a sign put up the next day. It was on the ground. Nobody could see it. Okay, if that sign was taken down, I mean, there, there's we, the county goes out and puts signs up on, and I, I hear you that <clears throat> they get taken down or got. That's a good suggestion. Guys, let's, guys, let's, we're, we're going we're gonna to take people, if you want to come and speak, because, because we record this and because we're also online, we need to speak from the podium. So if you want to come back up and speak, you can, but yeah. so. my turn. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. My name is Bill Scott, and I live at 1839 Browns Cross Roads. Uh, I've got a few comments about this. M Mr. Johnson said, you know, We've been zoning like this for since 1989. But if you'll look where the yellow is and right in front of it, it's all agriculture. And uh, behind it, it is very highly developed. I agree with him. And he, he, he did that other deal on two acres and he's trying to do these on 100, excuse me, excuse me, on 200 foot. But he's trying to do this on 100 foot. Look at this room. It's about 100 foot. Now that's putting people mighty close together. And then you're gonna put them sharing the same driveway? Oh no. By the time the wives don't get along or the youngins don't get along, you've got a recipe that I ain't gonna tell you where it was made at, but it ain't good. <laughs> I just don't think it's a real good idea. And uh, like I said, if you, if you have drove down through there, six, Double wides in there does not fit the area <coughs> at all. It's uh, it's not going to be good for it. And uh, like the lady said, a lot of folks in the church had no idea about it because you know you had a sign this big in the weeds, in the weeds, and this is for the whole zoning deal, Mr. Johnson. You need something bigger <coughs> and to show it. And I know that we have been, uh, since 1989, 
we have been doing this on zoning with 40,000 square feet. Is that not correct? We have made some mighty big messes, mighty big messes throughout the county. They're not all messes, but there's a lot of them. So that's my two cents worth, General, and thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, one last comment. I, I know Mr. Johnson keeps talking about all the manufacturing down in Staley. There is no manufacturing down in Staley. It is the old pallet company down there that's like got six people working for it that's been there for a hundred years or, or at least, in, what, the 40s or something. And then there is a, a, a furniture place down there that used to be the old Wright Furniture from another hundred years ago that does, uh, like, uh, paints the front end of, of, of bumpers now and sends it out. So it, Staley is not the booming metropolis. If somebody would get in their car and come down and take a look at it, okay, all we've got is the Main Street Grill and, and a, a, you know, a couple of places that are called manufacturing that have six people working for them. It is not a booming met metropolis down there. So I, I invite everybody on, on, on the commission here, the county commission, to come on down to Staley and see what a booming metropolis it is, and then you understand where we're coming from. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else who's here to speak tonight? Signs? I think Mr. Scott made that clear about yeah. bigger signs. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We'll take it under advisement. I've made a note. <clears throat> All right. Hearing none, we will close the public hearing. Wait, before I do, um, Mr. Davis, are they sharing driveways? But there's no shared easements or something. No, no, it's just shared. Don't own the property. And what about the power lines? The power lines, each property has their own break room. So uh, there's no power lines in the property. I think he's talking about the. I'm, I'm talking the about Mr. The, Mr. Power, the power line easement. Yeah, come on, Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis. Mr. Mr. Davis, Davis. can you come up and speak from the podium, please? The power line property is a, a bigger parcel, and Survey Carolina designed that on purpose to make it bigger to include the, the easements for the power line. That's why it's, a, it's over two acres, 2.89 or something of that nature. So where does it go? Is this the power it? line's uh, it's actually on that, on that survey. One on, you that see one, on this one property? Yes. Yeah. So there's plenty of land. Where would you site the, the house? On it, that? To the right of the, the power line. Easement. In that little triangle? Yes. But closer to the road, because I would want to give the church you know, some uh, buffer zone. Have you done any stick built developments? Yes. I'm a licensed general contractor and I built a lot in 2005 through 2008. So the economy, you know, suffered from it. But you didn't consider that for this site? No, because affordable housing is in my opinion is is what's very much needed for this area and it shows by the days on market uh, these homes are not trailer parks they're they're nice with brick <clears throat> underpinning um, they're built to high standards they are inspected by hud they do have a hud label um, they are they do bring it stats to the neighborhood you see the pictures and they're not your typical 1980 double wide um, you know, I, I know that some people don't want change and some people don't want development. And I understand that and I respect that. But if we can't build homes here, where are we going to build them? And if you look at the neighborhood, the zoning on the adjacent streets, uh, those are manufactured homes on both streets, Brooksdale and uh, the one adjacent to this parcel. Uh, I think it's something Guiley or Wiley. 
but it's um it does comply with the, the neighborhood there is some industrial uh, there was a unanimous decision at the last hearing no one was against on the council everyone was for it um, I'm again I, I, I wish I could appease and make everyone happy but the, the fact is you know we can't but if we don't build here where do we build um, and I think it's going to go right in line with the uh, you know the mega site and other things that are coming about in that area So I, you've mentioned it a couple times, I think, in your comments, and it was mentioned by the other folks. The church that sits there, you know, I guess, to the right side of our picture here or whatever. Yes. Uh, and you, you mentioned some setbacks or some kind of buffer or whatever to, for, for them. Sure. Is that, it's not necessarily in the plan, right? It's not in the plan. That's just something that was mentioned at last council meeting, and I had time to reflect on it, and, and I thought, sure, that'd be an honorable thing to do, give them some buffer. Uh, I'm not sure how much I can allow because of the septic system. It depends how that goes in the well, but I'm sure there will be room to, in that two point, I believe it's eight acres, to, to definitely leave them some buffer. Yeah, that's one of the larger lots in it. Or the, yes, the, it, the, it's the, the largest, largest lot in the track. That's correct. And I know that currently, when you go by the church, there are trees behind it. You can't see this. Yes. Because... I almost drove around behind it, but they had the two drives blocked, uh, roped off, and so I just thought, well, I'm not going to drive around behind it. Um, they obviously don't want people pulling in there, mm -hmm. but I just noticed that looking behind the church, <clears throat> excuse me, you currently see trees, mm -hmm. so. Um, yes. I only need enough to put the home and do the well and septic. Um, I think most people would probably like the privacy, and uh, the homeowner would as well. So, uh, yeah, I think it's ethically, and it would be the, the right thing to do for, for the church, and as far as looks, to, uh, you know, leave some trees in the back. So you'd have to put it within the dashed lines, I'm assuming that's the buildable area. Uh, are you referring to lot oh, six? Lot, lot six. Yes. Is that going to give you enough room for well and septic and yes. a buffer? Yes, we believe that. But Survey on this side of the power line? Yes. Because I'm assuming you wouldn't want to. If I had to, I could pump underneath the power line to the, the upper side uh, if I have a pump system on the septic tank. So if I needed more room, I could just, I can cross the septic system and get to the other side. Is, is that what you're referring to? Am I answering yeah, your question yeah, correctly? It's, okay. It's, that other, in other words, with that easement across there, I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm, I don't know what you can do as far as. I have past experience to, to where we can do something like that. We can build drives. We're mainly worried about structures. But each lot has its own septic system. Yes, independently, yes. Other questions, board? A couple of the, the like, Back on, uh, um, <clears throat> you know, where these are, mm -hmm. a couple of these are still for sale. Uh, I've got three up for sale. Two of those are under contract. I'm, let me rephrase that. I have two up for sale. They're both under contract. Had contracts within two to three days. Uh, we are working on the third one, and the sign will go up by the end of this week. I actually already have a couple brokers that are saying, please let us have first. You know, look at it before you. I just it. had seen the yeah. sign yes. out, and yes, so two are sold, two are under contract, <clears throat> and one isn't listed yet. So they are quite a bit of demand. And some of these homes I built two or three years ago, I say built, I I can I put them together as a setup contractor. Clayton, they are Clayton Homes. Um, back two or three years ago, they were selling for around one hundred and sixty. And now those same homes even used will bring over $200,000. I actually saw one on Henley Country Road on the MLS that was a late 90s model, uh, under 1,500 square foot, that brought 214000 back in November. So, uh, you know, the way of old thinking might be old thinking. These homes are appreciating. 
with, and that might be due to inflation or in other issues, but they are going up in value. What's, what's the, what length? Uh, how? The homes are usually 28 uh, feet. Well, I guess from the road frontage, they're about 56 and then 28 feet in depth. The 28 by 56 are typically, some are a little bit bigger. That would be some. That would be the smallest size. They can, they can go up from that. Because you've got about 100 feet or so, yes. a little more than that. And the lots field. on Brooksdale that I developed, they were not 200 feet lots. They were more like 125. Other questions? Am I to understand the uh, on the buffer? Uh, how I don't think I've heard the how, what size buffer you're talking about. Um, I haven't measured it. I would just if you wanted to put something on the record, uh, I would say we could at least do 25 feet to start. If I can do 50 or more, I'll be glad to. But I could do a minimum of 25 feet. And that would be on that. And, and leave all the vegetation that's currently there there. <coughs> That'd be on that larger track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will, but I'll leave as much as I possibly can. It's no benefit to me to clear the whole lot. And you do have some of these lots already sold or under contract? No, I haven't listed anything because I didn't know None how None of them have been listed. I'm sorry? None of them have been no, listed. None of them are listed currently, no. <clears throat> but you started clearing. We started to clear. I could see it. In yes, there. we did, and it was a pretty rainy season, so we pulled off and went to another job. It was pretty wet in there. But you would accept a 25 foot buffer? Yeah, I would accept a 25 foot buffer. On that one border? Yes. On the. That, what would you call that? On the east and west? On the east. On. The, I'm not sure of the direction on that legend, but to the if you're facing it from Whedon, be on the right side next to the church. How about next to the house, uh, to the gentleman that spoke tonight on that side? I don't think that's going to be feasible because I believe that's, a, I don't have the survey, but I believe it's a 100-foot lot. And I don't think if I did that, there, the lot would even be buildable at that point. Any other questions or comments? Commissioners? All right. All right. Thank Hearing you. None, we will close the public hearing and um, come to the board for discussion. Motions on the request. It's in, in my neck of the woods. Yep. Um, and I do empathize with, I mean, I live in north of there, and it's going to be uh, a lot of um, industrial relation, industrialization, commercialization, whether we like it or not. Um, I did ride out there yesterday. I knew, I knew the area anyway. Um, Stately Parade lines up right in front of this, this property, so <laughs> I spent a little time in front of it. But um, there are some issues with the, the um, site views along uh, the, the road there. I, I don't think they're, they're, they're catastrophic. Yeah, I've seen, seen worse, and I think that's probably a DOT, DOT issue, even though um, I don't always agree with, agree with the DOT. Um, but basically from uh, the corner up there, uh, I'm not sure exactly per the map where the sign was, but you could see the sign uh, down there. So it's, it, it's, it's not ideal, but I don't know that it um, would prevent something <coughs> from, from being developed there. Um, I know, it's, you know, I empathize with the agricultural area, but also know that you know, we've got to provide housing, and that there's um, development that was on the uh, Brooksdale, I believe it was. Those lots are even smaller than, than these. These are a little bit oblong or longer, but it is, those lots were an acre, 
These are about an acre and anywhere from an acre and a quarter to about an acre and a half. So, um, you know, I empathize. I, I know that the folks in, in Staley um, don't want the change. I don't. I don't want the change either. Uh, where I live, but it's going to change, and we have to do make the the best of it. Uh, he could do some other things in here that would put single wide trailers in there. Um, I know they're concerns with crime, but this that area there is on a main thoroughfare for the most part coming into Staley, so I don't know that um, it's going to deteriorate the neighborhood substantially along by that road just for those those six units. And they, you know, manufactured housing is is um, something that is more for, but it is it looks good. Uh, I was in work for a gentleman for several about 25 years ago, and there's a world difference between now and even then. Um, would I like to see something different in there? Sure. Um, but we also have to honor the rights of those that own the property. Uh, we can try to, uh, as much as we can, let the neighborhood know what's going on. We're trying to do that tomorrow night at Eastern Randolph to get the community involved. In what, there's going to be growth. It's a matter of where is that growth going to be. Um, and that's what that meeting tomorrow night. So I encourage everybody to come tomorrow night. Um, but I, I just don't know that there's enough to, other than with the buffering, I think that's important, uh, especially for the church. Um, I don't know if we want to define that buffer any further than just the 25 or 50 feet. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of vegetation's in there. I wouldn't want to take out and make it too thin in there. I don't know if you want to have you know, some sort of um, added vegetative buffer in there. Um, but that would be one of just kind of my my thought is 25 going to be enough uh, to, to screen through there without something additional. 50. You think 50 would be enough? Or? I think 50 is really appropriate. Yes. Include that, but well, I mean, should we ask the landowner if he feels like he can live with 50? We can do that at the end. Let's yeah. finish all of our comments. Okay. All right. Those are those are kind of my comments. I don't know what the rest of the items of, of the board are. Well, my thoughts are a lot of times in, in dealing with these issues, you, uh, 25 is short. <laughs> when you get out there, 25 is short. Uh, uh, when you're talking about a buffer, a 50-foot buffer is more appropriate than 25. Other comments? Is there, is there a motion? I, I think we probably need to ask the applicant yeah, if, he, if he would consent to a 50-foot buffer, and if not, I think it would be appropriate, yes. Would you accept yeah. a 50-foot buffer next to the church? We have the survey. You pull up the site plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. That side. The whole that side. side. Or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. My thoughts there, gentlemen and, and ladies, is is the fact that I've seen it where we in the past that twenty five that twenty five is not a very wide strip of land. If you're really wanting to help out, you're really talking about fifty. You're you're accepting that? Yeah. So the applicant has indicated that he would amend the application and accept that for a 50-foot buffer on the eastern property line as shown on the site plan. Yes. yes. Mr. Mangum, do you, Mr. Mangum is in the process of 
amending that application uh, because we don't, the county commissioners don't sit in this seat often uh, hearing appeals as much as they used to in the past, I should say. Um, Mr. Mangan will revise that application. The applicant actually has to sign that before you guys vote on it. So it's not something that can happen tomorrow if he has to sign that tonight before you actually vote on it. Do we need the motion including that? And then have this yes, yes, that will be a part of it, but you need to hold off on voting that until the amended application has been printed. That's, Mr. Mangum does a great job of bringing his laptop and amending that, and right. so he does a really good job with that. Right. I would say too, that, that this board is hearing it new. You know, what happened at the planning board um, really doesn't have any impact on our decision tonight. We hear it from the, from the start. So I guess what I'm trying to say is there's no, you know, inherent bias or anything that the board has. Right. Do we have a motion for consideration? <coughs> let's, we have to hold off. We have to wait. We have to well, I thought you said do that. No, let's, oh, okay. we, have, we, have to, we have to wait and, right. until the applicant application is signed. My sense is that while we don't care for change, that the problem with the housing is not what it looks like now. It's what it looks like 20 or 30 years from now, as the one gentleman said, after it's gone through two or three owners. And I know, I mean, I've I noticed those things since I became a commissioner and we were doing things like this. And I mean, I can take you over just right off of 85 um, <clears throat> between um, Chapel Hill, the Chapel Hill area and Durham area, just right off the interstate there, if you're looking closely, you know, you can see these, you know, dilapidated, I mean, they're, you know, they are the single, the single wides from years ago, but they've been, um, you know, abandoned, and so they, there's a lot of junk around them, and I don't know what I don't know what we do about that. I mean, um, I, I don't know what we do about that because they're sold to someone, and then they're sold to someone else. And um, like I said, these you know these these look good, and they provide they provide a home for. Um, a couple and maybe one or two children in three bedrooms. And I did notice that one of the homes there, I don't think you have a picture of it, but one of these homes back on that side had a, had a, a wire, a chain fence around it. So they had their yard fenced in. And I can imagine that in the future that people will take great pride in these homes and they will, you know, they may have gardens, gosh, they get full sun. If the soil's good, they may have gardens out in front or, um, <clears throat> you know, play equipment. And uh, they'll be able to call it home and they'll be able to afford something for less than $350,000. Um, but, you know, I'm with you. The problem is not now as much as it is <coughs> 30 years from now or 40. <clears throat> And maybe that's something we as a county can talk about at some point in time. But. The developer, Mr. Davis, has signed um, a, a new request showing a 50-foot buffer along that uh, east or southeast borderline right there. Mr. Chairman, given that fact, I'll, I'll make the motion to approve this rezoning request as rezoned as specified parcels on the rezoning application and the map amendment ordinance to the requested zoning district based on the determination of consistency and findings of reasonableness and public interest statements that are included in the planning board agendas submitted during the rezoning presentation 
um, and as may be amended incorporated into the motion to be included in the minutes as well as the site plans and with any and all, <coughs> all other agreed upon revisions, which would be the buffer. Also incorporating the motion that the request is also consistent with the Randolph County Growth Management Plan. Do I have a second to that motion? Do I have a second? I'll second it. Very good. All right. You have to read it. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Further discussion on the motion? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, opposed, no. And it passes. Unanimous. All right. All right. Thank all of you for your participation tonight. <coughs> and hope we'll see some of you tomorrow night. Move adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned. <laughs>